It has now been a few weeks since the launch of Ark Survival Ascended, and in that time I've done a bunch of exploring, a bit of building, and a ton of breeding. The mechanics for breeding have stayed similar to Survival Evolve, but there have been a couple of tweaks worth mentioning, and one difference that is straight up game changing. In this breeding guide, I will be walking you through everything you need to know about breeding, from which stats to look out for, and how to get all stats in one, to looking out for mutations, and then how to stack those mutations to get some super strong tames for boss fights. All good breeding programs start in the wild, with high level creatures to pull stats from. Personally, I will tame anything level 130 and above, as I will still have a chance to give you a good stat that can be used. Once you have found and knocked out a creature of your choosing, the pre-tamed stats can give you a hint towards what the creature will come out as, but with the aggressive RNG that comes with Ark, these stats are never a promise. The three main stats you will be looking out for are Health, Stamina, and Melee. As a quick breakdown of how these stats work, all creatures start at level 1, and for each level above that, a point is randomly placed into one of the six potential stat categories. For instance, if you find a level 150 Rex in the wild, 149 points will have been randomly distributed amongst the categories. This is also true of the taming bonus. A perfect tame on that same 150 Rex will randomly assign another 74 points amongst the categories. There are a couple of ways that you can find the assigned points. The easiest way is with the new tech binoculars available in the Utilities Plus mod, or by beating the Alpha Overseer which will give an instant breakdown of all stats of any dino you are looking at. Or if you don't have access to those yet, you can enter the stats into the stat calculator on the Dodo Dex website, which will give you a breakdown of the points. The three main stats you will be looking for are Health, Stamina, and Melee, which you will want as high as possible. The other three stats, Food, Weight, and Oxygen, aren't nearly as important, so you will want them as low as possible. One exception to this is the weight stat. Depending on the server you are playing on, whether official or an unofficial that has the weight adjusted, you may keep an eye out for a higher level. As a general rule of thumb when you're looking at your health, stamina, and melee, 30 to 40 points is okay, 40 to 50 points is ideal, and anything north of 50 is rare and spectacular. Once you have tamed a few high level creatures and have at least one male and female, you can move on to the next step, which will be to combine all of your good stats and stabilize your breeders. If you haven't already, make sure to set up a hatchery for eggs close to but not right beside your breeding area. The best method for this is AC units, but a group of standing torches will work as well if you haven't unlocked the ACs yet. The reason it keeps us a bit further away from your breeding area is due to the oviraptors that you will be putting with them which will pick up the eggs while you're trying to hatch them, but more on that later. Next up will be to stabilize your line and start breeding. When breeding creatures, the offspring will come out with a mixture of the parent stats which could result in some drastically different creatures along the way. While stabilizing the line, you will have to check every baby to see what stats moved until you start to get all desired stats in one dino. For example, if the starting female has the health and melee you need, and the male has the stamina, breed them until you find a new male that has at the very least the stamina and one or both of the female's health and melee stats. At this point, you can swap out the original male with the new male and continue breeding, watching out for the final stat to move into the offspring. You may get lucky and have the stats move after a couple of mating cycles, or it may take a while to line up all the stats depending on sheer luck or lack thereof. One thing to watch out for here is that you don't leave a stat behind by replacing the original parents too soon. Always make sure that the replacement carries over the original targeted stat. For instance, using the example from earlier, if you get a male that has the same health and melee as the female, and swap out the original male with the stamina, you will end up leaving that stat behind. Only ever replace breeders once the stats start to stack. Continue this process of breeding and replacing until you find an offspring with all the stats you want, and then breed this creature against the opposite sex that is closest to the same stats until you find another identical offspring of the opposite sex. At this point, both the male and female should have the exact same level and stats across the board, and will be the beginning of your stabilized breeding line. Name these breeder male and breeder female respectively, and move them away from the rest of the creatures that were used to get to this point. One other thing to watch out for here will be mutations that pop up along the way. You will want your main breeding line to be pure, with no mutations at all, in order to maximize their potential. Mutations are applied randomly to one or two stats, adding two or four points respectively. When getting a double mutation, they could both be applied to a single stat, or more commonly across two different stats. Mutations can be found a few ways while stabilizing your line. The first way will be a bump in one of the stats above what the original parents had. The second will be a mutation number in the Show Ancestors tab. And the third by looking at the second column in the stats given by the tech binoculars. You can also identify a mutation by watching for a color change, but this doesn't always work out because sometimes the colors are so subtle you can't see them. You can also identify a mutation by the base level jumping up two points, but it will be hard to see that while stabilizing the line. 
If you find a mutation while stabilizing, first off pull it from the line immediately, then inspect to see where it went. If you luck out and mutate the health, stamina, or melee, you can set it aside and bring it back in later. Or if it ended up somewhere like oxygen or food, you can just kill it and move forward. I will go into much greater detail about mutations in the next section, where we will expand the breeding line and start hunting for and stacking mutations. Alright, now that you've stabilized your line and have your breeder male and female, you can start to expand your line. This part comes down to personal preference to a degree, depending on how much room you have for your selected creatures and the service tribe max dino count, but a general rule of thumb will be to have one male for every six or so females. Breed your male and female several times to start popping out carbon copies of the pure line until you have the desired number of pure females and enough males to reach all of them while lined up. As before, keep an eye out for mutations that pop up during this process and set the good ones aside. These will be much easier to spot now due to your line being all the same level. If you stabilize your line at 250 for instance and one pops out at 252 or even 254, you will know right away that a mutation has occurred and to set that aside. You will want all your main breeders to be completely mutation free. Once you have the desired number of creatures for your breeding program, ensure they are all named breeder male and female respectively and you are now ready to start looking for mutations. Now that you have your pure line ready to go, we get to the first major change to breeding that comes with ASA. To make life easier, head out and tame a few oviraptors as they now pick up both fertilized and unfertilized eggs, keeping them in their inventory. The pickup radius is pretty big on these little helpers, so you would only need a few strategically placed along your line to pick up all the dropped eggs. I have been placing one with each male along the line, but this is probably overkill. Once the ovies are all in place, double check that the egg pickup is set to both, then set all males and females of your pure line to start breeding. This next part is the most complicated part of the process, so I will do my best to explain as much as possible. Once you have collected a few eggs from the ovies, head to your hatchery and start hatching the eggs. If the eggs are disappearing as soon as you drop them, one of your ovies are too close to the hatchery and are picking them up right away. Try moving the ovi a bit or disable the egg pickup to continue. Keep hatching eggs watching for a jump in the creature's levels by two points, killing all creatures that come out identical to the starting level. Using the same example as before, if your pure line is stable at 250, you'll be looking for 252 or 254, for one or two mutations respectively. Once you have found a mutation, you will next have to figure out which stat caused the mutation. If it landed in one of our desired stats like health, stamina, or melee, perfect. Set it aside and continue breeding looking for the other two. If the mutation landed in oxygen or food, or if you got a double mutation that landed across two different stats, for instance health and melee, you must pull these from the line and do not breed them. If you would like, you can raise these ones up and imprint them to use in the meantime, but you are best to at the very least neuter them so as to not chance contaminating your line. Personally, I tend to kill these creatures right away as they have no use for breeding and count against your tame limit since at the moment cryos are not in the game. Keep breeding your pure line until you have three mutated creatures, one for health, one for stamina, and finally one for melee. Make sure to name these tames to keep track of them. I typically use a naming structure like Melee Mud X1. Next you will choose which mutation you would like to stack first. I typically start with Melee and check its sex. You can now disable breeding on all of your pure breeder males and set them aside from the line. If the mutation is on a female creature, breed it with the pure breeder male until you get an identical mutated male. If the mutated dino you choose is male, you can place it into the line with the pure females and resume breeding. Now that the mutated male is breeding with the pure females, you will be keeping an eye out for three things with the offspring. First off, you will need enough mutated males to reach all of your females. So continuing with the example from earlier, if your mutated creature is level 252, watch for 252 males to pop out and allow enough to grow up to replace the number of pure males you had originally. The second thing you will want to watch for is females mutated at 252 or any offspring that come out at the same level as your pure line at 250. These you can kill right away as we do not need mutated females for breeding, and the 250s carry the mutation without the stat itself. Another thing that is possible once you start stacking mutations is popping out a mutation on the original stat. For example, if your current mutated creature is 254, and a 252 comes out, the creature got a mutation on the original stats and not the mutated stats. Last thing to watch for is your stacked mutation, of course. If your current mutation is sitting at 252, watch for offspring that come out at 254 or 256. Once you find one of these, the next step is to verify where the mutations landed. With any luck, the mutation will land on the stat you are trying to stack, and then this will become your new mutation. Name this one Melee Mutt Times 2 and replace Melee Mutt Times 1 in the line. Same as earlier, if this mutation comes as a female, breed it against the pure breeder male to flip the sex. 
If you got a double mutation, be sure they both landed in the same stat, which is quite rare. If one landed in melee, but the other into anything else, this creature will have to be removed from the breeding program. Repeat this process until you are satisfied with your mutation level. An additional note on mutations here, all offsprings take the mutations from both parents to a maximum of 20 per side. When this is reached, they will stop mutating altogether. If you breed two mutated creatures together, even if they have identical mutation stats, the offspring will show both mutation counts effectively doubling the mutations while keeping the same stat. This is why we keep all mutations on the father's side while stacking mutations and breed him with the pure females. Leading up to mutation number 20, you have the chance of a mutation coming from either the mother or the father, but once you get 20 mutations into the father, the rest of the mutations will be coming from the mother's side only, cutting the chances of further mutations happening essentially in half. You can keep breeding in this manner until you reach a total of 255 points into a single stat, at which point it will stop stacking. So if you started mutating at 51 points, you can add 204 points through mutations to that stat. But you may run into another problem at this point depending on where you are playing, but more on that shortly. Once you have reached your desired mutation level, you can now remove these mutations from the line and start one of the other two stats, following the same process, breeding the first mutation against pure females, and stacking them until you reach your desired mutation stack. Once you are happy with the mutations you have on all three stats and no longer plan on mutating them further, you can now breed the mutated health, stamina, and melee creatures together to get all three mutation stacks into a single creature. This is where things can get tricky depending on what server you're playing on. If you're on official servers, the maximum creature level was 450 for Survival Evolved, and I would assume it is the same for ASA. If you start with too high of a level creature, heavily mutate it and then add the 88 experience levels that you can obtain, you will be way above the server limit and the creature will be deleted when the server restarts. To avoid this, you will have to be mindful of the number of mutations you strive for, and also breed with a low level creature to tank the oxygen and food stats to give yourself some more wiggle room. This can be done at the end of the mutation process or right at the beginning while stabilizing your line. To do this, tame as low of a creature as you can and breed it with your creatures to move the low oxygen and food stats, potentially giving 50 to 60 points or even more worth of space below the server cap. I have one final note about mutations, and this one is an absolute game changer that came with Arc Survival Ascended. In Survival Evolved, the mutations were directly attached to the stats, meaning if you found a higher base level for your desired stat, you would have to start all over with your pure line and restart stacking mutations on the new stat. In ASA, however, the mutation can transfer independently of the stat, meaning if you find a better base stat, you can breed it into your pure line and then breed it against the mutated fathers until the mutation transfers from the old stat to the new one. This means you can start mutation stacking as soon as possible, without fear of having to restart your entire breeding program if you end up finding a better base stat down the road. As far as I know this is a feature and not a bug, but we will see how that pans out over time. Breeding for mutations in ARC is a long and complicated process, but I hope I was able to explain the ins and outs of my mutation stacking methods so you can start breeding strong creatures for your survival adventures. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments, and I will do my best to explain any of this further. If you would like to have a more in-depth conversation about breeding or ARC in general, consider joining my Discord server, I've left a link in the description. If this has helped you understand the breeding mechanics of ARC, click the like button to let me know and consider subscribing so you don't miss my next video. That's all I have for you today, as always, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, keep gaming.